your mixtape might be the hottest thing on earth. Or it might not. But either way, you'll think it is. And here's why. One of the things we talk about on this channel is the many types of emotion that our brain processes when we look at art, music, or other entertainment. That masquerades as one feeling. But to this point, we've mostly focused on the power of social momentum and how that creates its own unique feeling that boosts all the popular entertainment we take in. However, there's a whole different side to the situation, and that's the way our brains process entertainment before it has any social momentum. Like we've said, without those emotional boosts, the actual stimulation of the art itself is never enough for us to react as though it's good. That plays a huge part when people try to decide what new artists to hire or produce, since we get emotional boosts from random personal attachments instead. But that same thing applies before we even submit our work to anyone else. Those outside emotions and the level of feeling that we learn to associate with a great piece of entertainment also affect how we judge our own work when we ourselves start making entertainment, and in this case, music. We can come up with a great melody, a great beat, great lyrics, or something similar. I'm not a musician myself, and I'll leave it to them to describe the technical parts of that. But of course, when those things work, they give us an emotional reaction. But even if we write something fantastic, all it can do is match the emotional reaction of the melody, beats, lyrics, and other things in great work we've seen, which also come with other boosts, making our own work still not be enough on its own. But when we listen to our own work, our brain actually goes through a different process than when we take in other work in the normal world. As we described that real-world process in our video on why no one wanted to publish Harry Potter, the way I feel about Lord of the Rings is actually a combination of things. How the book's story makes me feel, how I feel about what the book has done for me, like you might feel about your wedding ring, and how I feel about what the book has done in the real world. And when we process our own work, two of those categories actually become one. Because the role that work plays in the real world, which includes how we feel about the creator and what the work is doing in the world, is actually mixed with what the work is doing for us personally. Because we are both the creator and the viewer at the same time. A piece of entertainment you take in, like a song, may mean something special to you because it symbolizes a great goal being accomplished in the world, like David Hasselhoff's song Looking for Freedom, which came out as the Berlin Wall was falling in Germany. Likewise, a piece of entertainment you take in may mean something special to you because it symbolizes something for you yourself, like the song that was playing when your husband proposed to you. And those two sets of emotions and the various things that might cause are actually more than half of the emotion you can feel about something, which is why when they're powerful enough, you can see people liking songs that aren't technically sound or might not even be songs at all. So now, with that in mind, let's imagine the situation where a song means both something special to us and represents something good in the world too, which is exactly what can happen when you made the song yourself. Like for example, your song shows that you yourself are capable of making your own music or your own book or something else. That's a powerful sense of accomplishment. It confirms a lot of what we want to believe about ourselves. And on top of that, you can associate that song with your own personal ambitions. You yourself achieving things, money, status, validation, and all of that. And so those things in and of themselves can give you enough emotion that you can get over the level of emotion you associate with a great song, regardless of how good the songs are that you actually wrote. But of course, this also doesn't mean that the mixtape is not good. It might be great, in which case you'd like it even more. But to really find out, it has to go through a different process. Because when someone else listens to your mixtape, just like you had personal emotions filling in for the lack of social ones, that same person's judgment is going to depend on their own personal emotions, which will mean what they think about you, whether they like you, for example, or what they think it will do for them or for the world. This is one reason why directors and executives like to use actors or spokespeople that look like themselves. But when that person hears your mixtape, it usually means a lot less to their own personal ambitions than it does to your own. So it will depend more on what they think of you as a person or other random connections you might not be aware of. Like, for example, that you might use a xylophone in the song, and they played the xylophone in their band growing up. I'ma just make it cause of talent. I used to believe in that sh and I go goddamn well 
you gotta be friendly with somebody. And if your mixtape or artistic submission to any company has to get passed up a ladder and get approved at each step before you get signed or produced, then you essentially have to have a personal appeal to each individual on that step. Regardless of how good your mixtape actually is in and of itself, they won't feel enough unless they do. Because like we've said, they hear good music all the time. That also has marketing and charisma and other things attached to it. And that's the level of emotion we subconsciously associate with something being good enough to release. And if you make it through that process or you get directly spread through grassroots marketing or having direct access to a top level decision maker, then your work will be released to the public with the marketing and the social momentum that people always hear alongside a popular song. And then people will be able to hear your mixtape with the same amount of emotional power that they hear popular music. And then the quality of your actual mixtape will be able to be compared by your listeners to everything else that has all that other emotion. Can you explain why that says to you that it's not may not be by Van Gogh? Uh, when you see it amongst the other works, uh, uh, it will be easier to explain. So you see it when it's hanging upstairs more vividly than when it's down here? Yes. And then, and only then, will we finally know if it is truly fire. But until then, you can sit back and bask in your own heat. This whole thing also applies to things people create besides just music and even art, like in some cases entire social media companies, which might be something to tackle soon. Until then, click the notification bell, like, comment, and subscribe, and thanks for listening.